This is a Muay Thai shadow boxing workout. Follow along. Round number one is defend and counter straight punches. So we can slip, we can pull, we can slip to the inside, we can slip to the outside, we can counter at the same time. I can knock the jab or the cross out of the way and hit a knee. We have a lot of different options here. You want to have some variety. If I only defend one way, there's a way around it. If you go against people with good IQ, they're going to find ways around it. It'd be like if I threw a jab, cross, hook over and over again with no tempo variation at you. Like, obviously, you're going to figure out a way to counter that. So if I only approach offense one way, that sounds silly, right? I can't do that with defense as well. You got to be a little bit smarter than that. Yep, I'm teeping, I'm sweeping the inside leg. You've got many ways to defend the jab. Please have at least a couple of ways to defend the jab and to defend the cross. Like I said, parries, slips, pulls, double pillar blocks, counter at the same time. The teep is one of the best things in Muay Thai. It's, it's the jab for Muay Thai, foot jab. In the game of Muay Thai rock, paper, scissors, that teep is elite. Yeah, jab, pull, catch with the gloves. Sometimes I just catch with my, my forearms. You know, I'll change the block to like a Dracula guard. I'll knock the, uh, the cross down and I'll come over top with a kick. I'll knock the uh, cross down and I'll, I'll step into a switch knee. I'll follow up with an elbow. Don't be too creative here, just be effective. And once you have a good base, now you can start switching it up. Just make sure you're balanced throughout the entire way. It's not just about defending. It's about constantly being in position. If I'm in good position, the odds that I'll do better in the exchange immediately go up. Counter with different variations of, of punches. So I've got the jab, I've got the cross, I've got the uppercut. Remember, just keep mixing it up. Sliding to the inside, hit him with that liver shot, one of my favorites. Knock the jab out of the way, counter with the low kick. I recommend you stay typically in one stance. Once you get that stance down, you could do the same thing next round in the complete opposite stance. But since we're keeping it six rounds, we're gonna go ahead and move on. Next round is gonna be just countering hooks. So hooks are coming and I'm countering those. In the break time, well, obviously you gotta pop the top off for any reason, <laughs> drop the AirPod. But in the break, I want you to just take that entire break and just relax your mind. It's like refreshing the page. I'm not really thinking too deeply about anything. Round two, countering, defending hooks. So one of my favorite ways is just pulling, using my arms Canelo style to block with the forearms. Remember the legs are important here. Block and counter. So I go into the hook, load up the cross at the same time, and then I fire back immediately. Right there, I get out of the way of the shot or I time at the same time. So once you throw a left hook, I'm throwing my right hook over top. Once you throw a left hook, I'm throwing a, a head kick over top. Now I really want you to see these shots coming at you. Right now I'm doing a little double T, just in case as they go to throw a left hook, I hit them with the teep, or just in case they abandon their, their hook and they catch my teep, I teep them again. I'm really finding the, uh, the visualization process just as important. Yes, you have to see these shots. If you're having difficulty visualizing these shots when you're not under pressure, imagine what it's like when the pressure's on. And it makes it more real, the rep becomes real. Catch the shot, fire back. I need you to be more balanced. 
right there. I, I duck under and I grab into a clinch. Notice I'm not really rolling too much here. Oh, that's, that's not rolling underneath, but that's rolling with the shot, allowing your face to just get that little bit out of the way. Yeah. Catching, firing back straight shots, catching, firing back hooks, check hooks right over the top especially if you're a longer lankier fighter you can do those types of shots the 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 ryan garcias right over top and now i'm going with the hook and then firing back catching it on the shoulder Pereira style the the andre ward style lifting up the the uh, hook getting underneath crossing you know the the forearm across the face, getting in that Dracula guard, that long guard. Just visualize, visualize hooks coming at you. It's on easy mode. The person's just throwing hooks at you and you're countering. This is how you become more present, more effective, rather than just doing a bunch of random bullshit. You kind of break it down, break it down into individual parts, isolate, then bring it back into context and break let's go let's go remember present and be strong emit strength emit power during the breaks look like you're ready to go you know the the i forgot what the fucking quote is but i think therefore i am i didn't forget it now i remembered it just now but once you feel these ways, once you emit that strength, your, your body falls in line. It's like when you smile, you know, you, you kind of naturally feel more happy. Round three, defending kicks, round kicks. So right now we're going to just defend the rear kick of the same stance. So I was actually messing up in the beginning of this round because I was not visualizing well enough. I was literally checking the wrong side because I wasn't visualizing. I was just going through the move set. You got to visualize. Now I'm seeing it. Now I'm seeing it. I see the rear kick coming. I catch. I kick the leg out Danny Bill style. I reference him almost every time because when it comes to this, he's goaded. Catch the kick, clear the kick, sweep him. See, as, and as you can tell, it's harder to flow when you are focused on one thing, because naturally we want to do a bunch of stuff. We want to do what, you know, is instinctual. So when you, when you focus on just one piece, you really have to be totally present because you can't just let your mind run. If we are working on flow and we are working on just transitioning to everything, that's more natural. But now we're not. We're just focused on defending that rear kick. Same stance, rear kick. It's coming back at you. I'm even timing, um, I'm setting up the kick. A lot of times when you throw, when you throw anything at somebody, they're gonna kick back, especially in Muay Thai. They've been conditioned, especially if you throw the same side. So if I throw a switch kick, a lot of times they're gonna check and counter back. I'm just poking and prodding. I want you to poke and prod at them. I want you to cause the, the reaction. I think this was in the Tao of the Jeet Kune Do where they talk about, um, you know, like a, a feint or, you know, setting up a shot by just throwing a shot. If I throw a shot, they're way more likely to throw something back and I can make it more of a predictable thing as opposed to just waiting, waiting, waiting. You'll see that a lot with two counter fighters. They're just waiting and sometimes that fight's just boring because they're both real gun shy because there's real consequences. Yeah, you know, just checking, catching, teeping. Like I said, Muay Thai, rock, paper, scissors. Teep wins very often. We got 19 seconds left. Ooh wee. Getting out of the way. Remember that rear kick's going down low. That rear kick goes to the body. That rear kick goes up to the head. 
Nice. Not just, not just doing random movements. If you're enjoying this so far, please like. If you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe now. I'm looking at like, what's the next thing? I'm like, okay, this is the next thing. So round number four, we're gonna defend the teep. Defend that teep. We talk about how it's, it's God mode. It's, it's the jab, it's a foot jab. So it's the jab of Muay Thai. Obviously the jab is the jab of Muay Thai, but this is what really makes Muay Thai stand out in comparison to a lot of different striking arts. It's the powerful teep. It's got the power of a cross, but it's got the distance of a jab. So I'm knocking that teep out of the way. I'm catching that teep and I'm sweeping. That's what I want you to do. Knock that teep out the way, counter. Catch that teep, sweep. It rhymes for a reason. Ooh, catch the teep, throw it down and chop the leg. Liam Harrison's really good at that one. Knocking the teep out with the, um, with the legs. So using your knee to clear that teep instead of dropping your hands, which, is, which just gives you another layer of security. That's really helpful and applicable to people who have good leg dexterity. It's much easier to do it with your hands, your elbows. Your elbow's another great way too. Instead of dropping your hands, you use the inside of that elbow to just misdirect, or not really misdirect, but direct the, the teep across your body, which preloads your next shot. So if I use my left elbow to clear, my right straight is there. Notice how when I catch the teep, I clear it. Sometimes I'll, I'll isolate just the catch because I'm focusing on one small piece. It's okay to focus on one small piece of the overall movement. The goal here is to be completely focused on developing one piece of your game. So if you're struggling with teep defense, this is one of the best things to just constantly drill. Visualize, take yourself there. Think of all the ways you can defend and then just make those solid. If you want to even distill it to just one move, just knocking out of the way counter, make the delivery clean. Let's go. We got 45 seconds. Nice, nice. Seeing it, seeing it. Always being in position, not really like allowing that time to just reset, you know, just be strong the entire way. Yes. Let's go. Let's go. Yo, now we're faking and we're fainting. So there's typical responses on, on, on defense. So as soon as I go to counter something, Let's say I knock the leg out the way. Obviously, I want to chop the leg. But then after you land that, you can knock the leg out of the way, fake the low kick, and then come up top. Yes, we're in the middle of, you know, round four and five. We're going to go back to the rear, uh, rear kicks, but it's going to be a switch kick instead. So imagine, you know, you, you've got a person in the same stance as you, and they're switch kicking you. In between rounds, I like to literally not think of shit. Maximize the recovery. Then you come back fresh. We visualize, visualize. Nice. Notice I added a feint, so it causes a delay. A lot of times, as soon as you check, they expect the fire back immediately. Now I'm getting a little bit more into the flow, as you can see. Ooh, stepping into the opposite stance. Ooh, and then adding that, uh, that turn of the hip to really torque that leg. Knock them off balance. Remember, if you can catch people off balance while you're hitting them, that's gonna be so much better for you because you're, you're maximizing your power. Now flowing again, so adding more volume to your counter rather than just focusing on pop shots. Add some volume to your counters. 
Remember, they're going to the legs, they're going to the body, they're going to the head. So check that low kick by just turning that leg in. Cross block with your arms. Check with your leg. Ooh, the shin and the knee. Ooh, -wee. yes, let's add some feints. Let's go, we're cooking now. We're cooking with grease, bacon grease. Pop. Let's go, let's go. I want you to truly focus and just disappear into the movements. Feel the weight, feel the balance. Remember, it's all about constantly getting reps in. Where's my opposite hand? Where's my chin? Where's the, the weight throughout the entire movement? You have to focus on transferring the weight into your opponent and then coming back to a position where you're neutral enough to defend. Just because you can generate power if you're off balance, what good is power? I would sacrifice some power in order to be, you know, in good balance. That way you're always ready to counter. If you do happen to get hit, which we will get hit, you can absorb it better. Your legs are, are your shock absorbers. Throughout the entire process, maintain focus and calmness. If you can just focus for three minutes, most people have to check out. We teep. So, some good defense is always some counter teeping. The teeps always will set them off. As soon as they switch kick, you teep the leg, you teep the hip, you teep the body, teep the face. That jab gets there. And then having some fun, even, you know, like literally ducking under a head kick is hilarious. And even now I'm just like, okay, I'm having fun. The last round's coming up. I'm enjoying the music. Remember, man, always have fun doing this. In my head, I'm just like, okay, this is, this is the, this is the difference right here. This is the difference maker. Round six. Now we're focusing on defending basic combinations. One, two, three, I, I do it with the hands. So the jab, cross, hook, low kick. I mean, dude, we know what people are gonna throw. They're gonna throw the jab, cross, the jab, jab, cross, cross, hook, cross, cross, um, hook to the body, low kick. Just think about what you're training. What have you been conditioned to, to practice? You better have all those down. The jab, switch knee. The cross, switch kick. Much as I love flow, I love seeing it. I love the visualization, practicing each movement. Don't rush to the next thing. Finish the thing you're on. Finish the plate of food you got in front of you, then move on. Go back, go back to the, the buffet line. Right there, I'm defending somebody trying to knee me. Just one knee. I'm using my, my arm to post. That long guard, that frame, the power push. It's like a pulse, it's like a Heisman. And I'm countering, boom. Check the low kick, fire back. Check the low kick, faint, fire back. Let's go, let's cook. We got a minute, 35 seconds left. You're defending basic ass combinations and you're countering with whatever you want. Basic. One, one, two, two, three, two, two, three, low kick. Jab, rear knee, cross, switch knee. Double jab. Now I'm in the footwork phase. So I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm focusing on the person coming forward, throwing basic shit. I'm taking angles. The more you can see it in your mind's eye, the harder it is for your brain to differentiate what's reality from what's bullshit, what's fake. Like these reps that I'm getting, although I'm hitting the air and I'm not in front of anybody, they directly translate. 
Shadow boxing is the shit. It requires no equipment. You don't need any equipment for this. Let's go. We got 30 seconds left. Basic stuff. They throw the jab. They throw the hook. They throw the overhand. Okay, we got 10 seconds. Let's push. Come on. Woo. Come on. Yeah, stay composed. Stay composed. We got five seconds. Stay balanced. Ooh wee. Ooh wee. Congratulations. You made it to the end. Raise your hands in victory. Let's get this shit. Good work.